This is a video about the Dassault Rafale, one of the most modern and effective of the generation 4.5 of Delta Canard fighters. This is the third part of a series of two videos. However, before starting, since it is a French military plane and in compliance with the current YouTube policies about discussing the French military, I have an obligation to show you this. Welcome to Millennium 7 Star, the channel that helps you make sense of military history and military technology. Please stay with us till the end, because the stuff that we discuss here you won't find anywhere else on YouTube. In the late 70s, France was well ahead with the development of the Mirage 2000, which will enter service in 1984. However, they were already thinking to its successor. This may seem premature, but since the aerospace project may well take 20 or 25 years to go from the original idea to the first delivery, it was just the right time. When Marcel Dassault looked around, he realized that actually the moment was the right one. Not only France needed to think to the future plane for the Air Force and the Navy, but Germany would be in need of a replacement for the Phantom II, the United Kingdom of the Phantom FG Mark I and FG Mark II, Sweden was thinking to a vegan successor, and the American Grumman Corporation was in search of a successful project after the F-14. As an added bonus, France and Great Britain had to replace the Jaguar, and Italy the F-104S. So, all the conditions were there for a large international project that could harness the best of the Western technology and create a family of airframes of unprecedented success. Thousands of units would have been produced and it would have outperformed even the best Soviet counterparts, building on the synergy of both sides of the Atlantic. So, exactly as it could have been expected in this extremely favorable context, everybody went its own way. And perhaps this was for the best, because France clung to some key technologies, uh, developed new ones, and the result is an excellent machine. Expensive maybe, but really excellent in many areas. The Rafale is a Delta Canard multi-role combat aircraft. If you want to know why this configuration was a natural choice and why it is so common nowadays, there are two entire videos that cover this in detail. Obviously, we could talk for hours about a complex combat aircraft like the Rafale, so in this series of videos, we focus on the plane capabilities in the latest configuration, the F3 and the number 4 F4, rather than its development and design. So the Rafale empty weight is around 10 tons and the maximum takeoff weight is around 24 tons. As a comparison, the Eurofighter Typhoon is about 10% heavier but has the same maximum takeoff weight. The Gripen is much lighter with less than 7 tons empty and about 14 tons maximum takeoff weight. The F-35 is heavier being around 13 tons empty and 31 tons tons maximum takeoff, but this varies uh, between the different versions A, B or C. So the Rafale is about in the middle of the range. The engines are two Znecma M88 turbofan with a thrust of about 50 kN each, or 5 tons if you are as old as I am. The thrust to weight ratio is difficult to estimate because it depends heavily from the quantity of fuel and the weapon load. So a single number basically makes no sense. It seems reasonable to say that in a typical air-to-air -air configuration, the thrust to weight ratio is among the best in the category, similar to the Eurofighter and better than the Gripen and the F-35. As usual, it is difficult to speak about the plane range because it depends from the payload and the fuel. But what is particular about this plane is the large quantity of fuel that can be embarked much higher than the Eurofighter and the Gripen. The Rafale may carry 
three large drop tanks and two conformal fuel tanks above the fuselage. And apparently the plane has little difficulties in lugging them around. Rafales have been often seen in uh, air-to-ground missions with two or three large drop tanks. Also the fair range is outstanding as the plane can fly missions up to 12 hours long, obviously with um, the help of air refueling. I believe that this is a deliberate choice derived by the particular French requirement. France needs to be able to operate autonomously in northern and western Africa where the distances are measured in thousands of kilometers and the complex logistics available within the NATO context well, it's simply not there. In the same way, the naval version may need to fly to and from the carrier, potentially very far into the ocean. Another outstanding feature is the super cruise, that is the capability of flying supersonic with no afterburner. The Rafale can super cruise around Mach 1.4 in a clean configuration. It is roughly the same performance of the Eurofighter, but is much slower than the F-22 and quicker than the Gripen, while basically the F-35 is not designed to supercruise. The Rafale has three variants. The Rafale C is a single-seater, the Rafale B is a two-seat, and the Rafale M is the carrier-based single-seat variant. For the non-French-speaking audience, C stands for Chasseur Hunter, B stands for B plus two seat, M stands for Marine, that is carrier bay. The M variant was the first to be developed and it was rushed in service to replace the hopelessly obsolete Etendard and F8 cruisers of the Marine Nationale. L'Armée de l'Air originally planned to a proportion of two thirds C and one third B. After the Gulf War in 1991, the French observed that the two-seat planes, particularly in the air-to-ground roles, behaved substantially better than the single-seaters. This led to the decision of inverting the proportion between the two variants and producing more bees. The plane is omnirole, that is a multi-role platform with some degree of specialization among the pilots, so all the variants have the same equipment if they are updated at the same standard. The F1 standard was rushed in service in 2001 with the first 10 units delivered to the French Navy to hastily replace the cruisers, as we have already said. It was basically a simplified air-to-air -air variant with just a fraction of the weapons and the system that were originally planned. Now all the airframes have been upgraded to the F3 standard. The F2 standard was the first completely operational standard and enter service uh, in 2005. The F3 is the current standard and a substantial improvement on the F2. Deliveries of new F3 airframes uh, started in 2018 and today all the F2s have been ported to the F3 standard. The F4 standard is currently being developed and it is expected to enter service in 2025. The Rafale panoply of weapons is a balanced mix of French and foreign weapons. In the air to air configuration, the main weapon is the Mika missile. It is a medium range weapon which is built in two variants one with an active radar homing seeker, the other with an infrared seeker. So while the sensors and the guidance are considered to be aligned with the top of the technology currently available, the weapon is kinematically slightly inferior to the AMRAM version D, which is the reference point for every Western missile. To overcome this problem, the Rafale integrates the multinational Meteor missile, which is probably the kinematically most effective weapon in the world. Quite curiously, the Meteor Seeker is derived from the Aster surface to air missile Seeker. In turn, the Aster Seeker was developed together the Seekers of the Mika family. So basically everything is related. Mika and Meteor will coexist for the foreseeable future, even because while the Mika is relatively cheap, the Meteor is very expensive and it can be procured in limited numbers. For example, France has in service 1200 Mikas, but just a couple of 100 meteors. A common air to air configuration is 2 meteor, 2 radar guided Mika, and 2 infrared guided Mika. 
It may be interesting to know that the Mika demonstrated a capability that was never demonstrated before by any air to air missile, as far as I know. 11th of June 2007, a Rafale fired a Mika over the shoulder against the target following the plane, with the targeting solution provided by another Rafale through the Link 16 data lane. Obviously, an auto cannon could not be missing from the armament, and in fact, the plane has a 30mm cannon with only 125 rounds, which are enough for 6 to 8 bursts. It is rumored that the original specification stated that during the air to air combat the cannon could fire autonomously without depending from the pilot reflexes, but this capability has never been implemented. According to the French doctrine, the Rafale covers three different roles in respect to air to ground operations generic air to ground, deep strike, and anti ship. The plane is certified for the Mark 82 BLU-1111 BLU BLU bombs in the dumb version, but curiously France is not employing them as such. They are always used as the warhead of a paveway laser-guided kit, obviously American-built, or for the French AASM hammer kit. This is a peculiar kit because it has a rocket booster to enhance the range and it also uses more than a single guidance system. The base version has an inertial plus GPS guidance which requires the target coordinates to be entered as part of the solution. The infrared version has an infrared sensor to uh, complement the inertial GPS guidance and it gives the weapon the capability to attack moving targets like vehicles. The laser guided version works like the paveway but it has a longer range thanks to the booster. These weapons have been reported to hit moving targets at 70 km distance in ideal conditions. To identify ground targets, create fire solution and laser designate them if needed, the Rafale needs external pods. The French Air Force uses the Thales Damocles, but several other solutions have been integrated, even non-French or American ones. For deep strike, two cruise missiles are currently certified with the Rafale. The MBDA Apache is mostly an airfield interdiction weapon with a range of about 200 km. The Scalp EG, the French version of the British Storm Shadow, is a cruise missile with a range of about 600 km with a heavy warhead to attack high value targets deep in the enemy territory. In addition, there is the ASMPA missile which is a long-range nuclear cruise missile which is part of the so-called pre-strategic nuclear forces. Curiously, all three weapons are built by MBDA and they have a quite a large level of commonality. Finally, in an anti-ship role, the plane carries the Exos AM39 Block 2 Mod 2. The longevity of this weapon is really outstanding since it was used by the Argentinian and the Falklands and during the Iran vs Iraq war and the results has always been excellent. Well, not if you were the receiving game actually. So if you like this video, please like it. If you dislike this, like it. Anyway, you please subscribe and hit the bell so you won't miss anything. And if you please consider supporting the channel on Patreon or subscribe star, because that would be awesome. In the meanwhile, thank you very much for watching and goodbye. <music>